So thank you everyone for sticking in. Hello, my name is Jasmine Mealy. Um, I'm a senior industrial design student here at Philadelphia University and um, I just want to begin by saying how humbled I am to be given this opportunity. Um, if you asked me five years ago if I'd be standing in front of all of you telling you about my design history, I probably would have laughed. Um, I don't have a, a history in art. I'm not, I didn't take all the um, art classes in high school. However, I've always been uh, one to build and create and make. So this is my brother and I when we were younger. We would always um, uh, hang out with my father. And if my mom had a problem with something around the house, we would help him fix it. So this idea of seeing a need, seeing something that some, my family needed and solving for it, I think is what um, transitioned me into industrial design. Um, so my time here at Philadelphia University, I've, um, uh, I have a design philosophy that I've kind of created uh, the first, ooh, sorry, the first being the insightfulness that most of my projects show, which include extensive human and market research in order to prove that what I'm about to create makes sense and is viable. Um, creativity, I love developing fun out of the box solution for daily problems. I think everyone could use a little extra smile on their face as they go throughout their day. So many of my products um, intend for that to happen. And lastly, because of the insightfulness and creativity, um, I'd like to believe that my products have an impact on the people that I give, that they're designed for. So these are the three, the three designs that I will talk to you about today. The first being Creature Connect, which was a one week collaborative design challenge sponsored by Lakuma Labs. So Lakuma Labs is the designer of the Noria AC unit. You guys might have seen it on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Uh, we really want, we looked into what makes their product and what is something that we could add into their family, not, take a, not replace the Noria AC unit, but work in conjunction with it. After writing the pros and cons of several of the ideas we were going, uh, splitting up into, we decided that dehumidifiers offered the most opportunity to work with the Noria AC unit. Um, the user research was a crucial aspect of our design. Uh, we found that most people who use dehumidifiers live in the west north central area, which is around the Great Lakes. Um, we found out what the average living room size was of um, living rooms in that area and found it to be compatible with the Noria AC unit. Similarly, we did market research on what exists today and how can we um, improve upon uh, those statistics that these products have. So we did a lot of sketching. Um, in the beginning on the left, you can see how most of our designs were very boxy and um, not very different from what already exists and how we transitioned to the right over to um, something that looks almost like a little creature, something fun, something that people would love to have in their home. This is the final product in context. Um, the idea that the water basin of the three creatures could be taken easily unscrewed and used to water plants or dumped into the sink. This is the three creatures communicating with one another and with you via a Bluetooth smartphone. So really going back to that user-centered, how does the human interact with their product? This product uh, won third place during the Sprint Challenge and also won People's Choice. The second project that I'd like to talk to, you about, talk to you about is Enzo's Personal Seat. This was an occupational therapy collaboration. So for you, those of you who don't know, um, occupational therapists, uh, their goal is to help improve the lives of people with special needs. Um, and so this is Enzo. He's our five-year-old client. Um, he has cerebral palsy, and he has difficulty doing almost everything, uh, a lot of the things that you and I would find very easy to do, such as sitting, eating, using the bathroom, communicating. And after visiting him in his home, we realized that he could not sit on the couch by himself. He needed to be held by his caregiver in this position. And we saw this as a great opportunity because what, you know, couch time, movie time, that's family time. And why shouldn't 
why should, um, as Enzo grow, grows older, he not be able to sit on the couch by himself with his family? This led us to designing seat cushions that adapted him into that um, fetal-like position that he felt comfortable and upright in. This was the first prototype that we brought to him. Besides the materiality, we also noticed that the angle of the back cushion needed to increase. As you can see, we had a stuff of pillow behind him. And the, um, the arm support needed to go more underneath his armpits as opposed to in front of him so he could stop from moving side to side. The final, this is Enzo in his final seat, made from a easy to clean canvas material. And this product was uh, featured at the innovation of, the, wow, sorry, the innovation of celebration, celebration of innovation gala at Philadelphia University last spring, and also won second place at the International Interior Design Association Regional Student Competition. So going into my senior capstone, um, it's a work in progress, but I knew from the occupational therapy project that I did, I found it to be so rewarding and so um, impactful, and it really made me feel good about what I was doing and reassured me that industrial design is where I'm meant to be. And so I knew that I wanted to help children with special needs once again for my thesis. So over this summer, nope. Over the summer, I spent countless hours looking at all these different blogs uh, of parents with children with special needs, and I focused in on children with autism spectrum disorder. There are two main things that I realized with children with ASD. One, autism is not linear. It's not just you're a little autistic, you're kind of autistic, or you're very autistic. It's not like that. Um, it's every child is different, and I knew whatever product that I was going to design needed to um, needed to be adaptable for different children and their needs. The second thing I realized, which led to my design brief, is that children with autism are four times more likely to wander away from safety than children without um, autism. This is a staggering statistic. 48% uh, will wander away from safety during their childhood. So I thought this could be something that is prevented. As of right now, parents spend thousands of dollars in securing their home, uh, thousands of dollars on locks and alarms. Uh, parents buy houses that are out of their price range specifically because it is more secure for their child to live in. Thousands of dollars on fencing, and e some parents even use barbed wire to keep their children from leaving the yard. Um, I want to prevent parents from having to turn their house into a prison for the sake of their child, children's safety. A second aspect that parents also implement is the use of a GPS tracker. These are great, but there's a few key um, areas of opportunity. One being that um, children with autism often do not like things worn on their wrist because of sen sensory issues. A second being that while it's cool that the parent can see that their child is leaving a safe zone, the child is never notified that what they're doing is wrong and should be corrected. So for my thesis project, I'm looking to incorporate a GPS that is not a wristband because of what I just mentioned previously, and accompanying, accompanying app that would let the parent know where their child is at all time, and a tertiary method for the child to understand that what they are doing is wrong, or at the very least distract them enough to prevent them from moving further away from their home or parent. So this is what the new storyboard would look like, showing how both the child and the parent would, um, would go through the steps of this process. So um, as of right now, I'm looking into what the different catalyst for this device would be. Like I said, it cannot be a wristband. So I've created prototypes of a, uh, a shoe attachment, a stuffed animal that could be easily clipped onto the child's clothing by their parent, but not easily taken off by the child themselves, and a vest that is reminiscent of a compression vest that many children with autism already own. As of right now, the stuffed animal seems to be the best uh, route to go. I've actually had the opportunity after like calling hundreds of families to test with a, a group of, of families that have children with autism, and 
they use the stuffed animal that's attached to them almost like a stress ball. So while they're playing with other toys, while they're talking to their parents, while they're watching TV, they use it to grab and squish and play with. And I think this is something that I can uh, play off as I continue with uh, further developing my capstone project. Uh, and just to reiterate, going from creating things that improve the life of my family to coming to Philadelphia University and taking the insightfulness, the creativity, and the impactfulness and uh, dispersing it across my projects. Thank you so much.